Yeah, I actually won a pair once. I won like tickets to, I think I picked Kale and the Zoo show and we won a pair of the headphones. That was the first time I ever tried them and that was really, really cool. Yeah. Like, I actually met Josh Hoover like that. I don't know if anyone knows Josh. Uh -uh. Um, so yeah, yeah, Josh, that's how we met Josh because we were getting going to get a booth with him at Park West. And, like we went on like the Umphreys. Um, I don't know what the page was called at that point, but like Velociraptors for Jesus. I know, but, what the fuck is it called? This but yeah, we had like one in with him and we were going to get like a booth and then we were checking in and we are like, oh yeah, we won this contest. And he's like, wait, these other two girls that I'm going to like get a booth with at Park West also won a contest? Is this your name? And I'm like, that's me, man. And so, like, that's how Josh Uber and I met and we're still friends. So that's it's always, cool. And he lives in San Francisco now, yeah. so I never get to see him anymore. It's sad. <laughs> Humphrey Karen's podcast episode 037. You're seen to chat about life, family, and of course, Humphrey's McGee. I'm your host, Sarah Jehemiak, writer, journalist, author, first solo female podcast host in the jam music scene, mom of three, wife, and total Humphrey. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the pod. I hope that you were able to check out last week's episode, which included a recap of the small string of shows in the Northeast that saw stops in New Haven, Connecticut, Albany, New York, and Portland, Maine. There is a link in the show notes where you can find that if you did not give it a listen. Recently announced by the band, they will be headlining the 29th annual High Sierra Festival in Quincy, California, July 4th through 7th. This is the band's seventh time at the festival. Other bands that are going to be there that weekend, Green Sky Bluegrass, Pigeons Playing Ping Pong, Galactic, Marcus King Band, AOL, and Seriously, a shit ton more of bands, so many, are going to be there. Tickets and VIP packages are on sale now, and if you are interested in getting more info about this festival, all of that can be found in the show notes as well. Also, a little something interesting for you guys. When the subject of summer tour dates was brought up on Twitter, Joel informed us that they are, quote, working on summer tour dates, and it's going to be a very surprising and unusual summer tour in some respects, a very fantastic change-ups, and plenty of beloved standbys, end quote. Excited to see where they're going to be hitting up this summer when that is all announced in the next month or so, hoping to check out some new cities, new venues this summer, so can't wait for that announcement. Since the band had a little bit of time off between the Portland, Maine show and the three-night run in Brooklyn, this episode will feature an interview with my girl, Aliana, that I conducted over the four-night New Year's run in Atlanta. I met her for the first time at the Female Umfreak meetup on Saturday during that run, and she just so happened to be signed up to do this interview with me Sunday of the same weekend, which... I had no idea until we started talking on Saturday. So that was very cool how that all happened. And now I have a new Umphrey sister, which can be very difficult to find. Um, but I'm super, super grateful for her and to have her part of my family now. And grateful that she took the time to sit down and chat with me for a little bit for this interview. And on a side note... In this interview, I do ask Aliana what she would like to hear Umphrey's cover that they have not yet done, and she was not really sure during the time of the interview, but she did give me an answer a couple of weeks later. Her response was, Revolution Is My Name by Pantera. I threw a link in the show notes where you can give a listen to the original and decide what you think for yourself. I wanted to give a quick shout out to my amazing friend and brother, Josh from Umfreaks Anonymous, who recorded the audio for this and who I'm very excited to work with on the interview project. 
If you do not know what that is, we are looking for um freaks that would like to be interviewed about their um love. Audio and video recording will be happening during the interview, and we would be conducting them during runs of shows throughout 2019. I'm going to be doing a few in March in Cleveland and possibly at summer camp if it works out. Red Rocks in June, Josh and I will be conducting interviews as well. And I know that there are some other amazing people throughout this community that will be helping on other stops throughout the country. So if you want to be interviewed, there is a link in the show notes where you can fill out the form. And I'm pretty sure there is a spot on the form that you can fill out if you would like to help with the project. If not, um, hit up myself or Umfreaks Anonymous and let us know. You can find contact information in the show notes as well. We would love to have you on this team. And also, if you are interviewed by yours truly, you will be featured on an upcoming episode of the podcast, just like this one here. And next week's show will be all about the three-night run at Brooklyn Steel in Brooklyn, New York, that happened on February 14th, 15th, and 16th. I'm excited to bring that all to you and share more about my first time in Brooklyn and all of the amazing shit that goes down during the weekend. The first time that Umphreys has played at this venue, so there is no doubt they are going to make their first appearance a memorable one. And without further ado, here's the first part in a series of interviews with fellow Umphreys featuring my girl, Aliana. Hope you enjoy. So if you want to start and introduce yourself, where you're from, your age, all right, that so, kind of stuff. All uh, right, so am I looking at you? I guess I'll just talk. Yeah, um, just all right, thing. So just talk. My name is Aliana. Um, I am from DeKalb, Illinois, from Northern Illinois University, if you're more familiar with that. Um, I guess I grew up in Aurora, Illinois, so Wayne's World, that's where everyone knows that from, Aurora, Illinois, that's me. Um, right now, I just... Oh, I'm not supposed to get on like my job life and stuff. Yeah, like whatever, that. whatever you want. All right, so I work with accountants, about. and <laughs> it's really weird, and they're kind of dull people. And I'm sorry for all the accountants <laughs> out there, but um, I, I, I seriously believe that I was hired for my personality and like the counterbalance that our whole team has had in like the past. I've been there for two months. I work for Aldi Corporate, so it's really please support Aldi. It's a great, great company. <laughs> they they take really, really good care of us. But, um, yeah, so I, it's been a really good dynamic balance on our team. So I finally feel like I'm fitting in somewhere and, you know, mm-hmm. somewhere where I'm able to grow but also bring what I love to do. Like, I'm really into statistics and Excel spreadsheets and <laughs> really nerd stuff. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, they, they appreciate that from me, and I enjoy doing what I do now. Very now, cool. Now, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, oh, I'm 29. Yeah, Did I say that already? Go. All right. I'm 29 years old. I'll be. I'm a minute away from 30, and I'm panicking. <laughs> so it's gonna be awesome. This is it. This is it. This is the last of my youth. So no, it's okay. I'll make it worth it. Yeah, thir- 30s right. are gonna be awesome. Yeah. Definitely. It's you get more into your groove of like, you know, who you are, right. and you know, stuff like that. So exactly. It's gonna be awesome for yeah. sure. All right. And how about your family? Uh, family. They're all from the same area. Like, I, we're all from the Midwest, Illinois. Um, my, I'm half Mexican, so that side, I guess, would be from Texas. Um, I hate saying this. I'm not a huge, huge family person. I'm like a holiday family person. I Actually, with my new job, my commute has gotten a little bit longer. So I've been taking that time to call my mom and grandma every day. So I, it's been a positive thing in my life to make me become closer to them. Uh, and especially as I get older, I'm realizing that, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> These are the people that matter in your life. So, um, but yeah, we're all from around Aurora, Illinois, right now. Um, like I said, I've been trying to see them more often. <laughs> we'll see. Be- better relationships there, right? Nice. Okay, so what is your Umphreys McGee show count? Tonight will be 106. So I just celebrated my 100th in Madison, and thank you so much, Umphreys, for playing my request. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> they started with it. I requested Miss Tinkles. I figured it's like more of a show pleaser like everyone can kind of get into it and when they opened it up with it it kind of just set the night and everyone around me was so nice and like i didn't have a second without at least one beer in my hand <laughs> I was just like, oh it's a hundred just keep passing her stuff and it was nothing but love so i had a really really good time but yeah tonight's 106 tomorrow will be 107 and then my next show will be milwaukee january 25th and 26th so mm-hmm. for 108 109 nice yeah so when did you start seeing them 
Um, I accidentally ran into them, um, Rothbury 2009. Um, I don't even think I stayed the entire set. I had no idea who I was seeing, but I was really, I've, I've always been into like that hair metal sound and that heavy rock. Um, so I, they caught my attention, but at that moment in my life, I was more into the techno scene and uh, bands like that. So I couldn't, I couldn't really see myself going to see just them. Uh, and then actually in 2013, when they did the Stum Tour with STS-9, um, I went for uh, STS-9, and I ended up falling in love with Umphreys. Like that Let's Dance finale, when they all came out on stage, and just, they, it blew me away. Number one, I love that song. Mm -hmm. I'm, I call myself a bad fan sometimes, because I absolutely love their covers. Like, they slay their covers, though. They're just so good at them, and they're like give the proper respect to the song by playing mm -hmm. it so technically well. That's mm -hmm. how I feel, at least. Um, but yeah, my first official show would have been uh, Northerly Island, uh, Bad With Dates. I think it was August 17th, 2013. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I've been on her. So I've been, I've averaged about 20 shows a year since then. So I've been Very busy. Nice. I've been busy. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how long did it take you to, like, feel the way you feel about them now? Honestly, I would say that very first show, like everyone around me was so kind and I had never been in such a family community like that where I saw people taking care of their friends. I saw people embracing and, and, and to think like at that point in my life, I thought it was crazy when I saw someone crying at a show and I have been there many times since <laughs> and, and the first time that happened. Uh, I, I was like, okay, now, now I really get it. So I guess that it probably took about a year and a half to get to that, that point, mm -hmm. but I knew what I was going to be feeling eventually the very first night. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so what is the furthest that you've traveled to see them? I think Colorado. We left and I drove. I think that's why it's felt the farthest. Um, <laughs> but I think distance wise, it is also the farthest. Um, yeah, we left Friday night after I got off work at 7 p.m. and we drove through the entire night. I do not recommend that. <laughs> it's like, I did it. I did, oh, yeah, I heard he, he did that yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he drove I'm the whole way a here. Super, man, because I was, and I, my girlfriend, she offered to drive a few times, but I'm very, I like to be in control of my car. You know, if something happens, That's I it. want it to be on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't want someone else to have to feel responsible for anything that were to happen that was bad um so i let her drive for about 30 minutes but i could not get it i couldn't let myself fall asleep so i was just mm -hmm. anxious and tired <laughs> so I'm like, i'd rather just be tired <laughs> and know that everything's under control but we made it obviously um but yeah colorado for red rocks uh and that was this past one we drove yeah, so we're flying from now on flying. yeah yeah <laughs> flying. yeah i know after after we drove this far i'm like kind of like thinking about it like I'm not a flying person yeah. and I'm gonna have to get over that when we go to Red Rock for yeah. the summer but yeah oh that's far yeah, yeah it's far especially. for oh sure my goodness. so we're definitely flying for that one but after this drive I'm like I think we do land again we're gonna maybe have to fly yeah like it's yeah. I'll get over it, it how long was it for you uh what four I think it was like 14 hours, 14 hours. that's what yeah. I did and that was I so my commute has actually made me a better driver because, I mean, although it's only 45 minutes every day, for the past 10 years, I have been 10 minutes away from work. So I'm just like, Ugh, anything past like an hour sometimes. So my show time was always like two or three hours I start getting really cranky and like I want to get out of the car. But like now, I'm like, eh, you know, what am I going to do about it? I put on the jazz station, mellow out, <laughs> like get it over with. That's that's my secret, yeah. the jazz yeah. station. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your... Where's your favorite venue to see on Free Play Live? So I don't even know. Someone asked me this the other day, and I am so, like, I want to start something that's called, like, and I don't know if it's a thing, uh, All Things Venues, where, like, people go and they, like, write, was it hot? How was the wait for the beer line? Like, give me every single detail so, like, I can remember. Because sometimes, like, I get my Madison and Milwaukee's mixed up. I'm terrible. I don't know where I'm at sometimes. People are like, where'd you just go visit? And I'm like, they have all just ran together so much. But I I probably enjoy my favorite state, I guess I can give you. I love when they come to Wisconsin. Like, it's obviously, it's local to me. I see them there a lot. But I think either Wisconsin or Michigan, those are my two favorite places to see them. I love seeing them in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. I think they throw down, obviously, Stasic. Right. Um, and then um, I love when they go to... 
Madison has a special place in my heart now since my 100th. But Milwaukee, I mean, the Halloween runs they do, they, mm -hmm. they absolutely kill it. So Very that'd be my cool. answer there. Very cool. Um, what is one place that you haven't seen them play that's on your bucket list? Oh, that is a good question. I want to see them in uh, Nashville, actually. I think Nashville would be a really, really fun show. Um, I, After seeing, like, Tabernacle... Um, I, so I don't know, Colorado's far, yeah, I'm bad with geography, so yeah, Atlanta, this is the farthest south I've been, probably south, the farthest east too, mm -hmm. I don't really come out this way too much, so it would be nice now that I got a feel for like that southern charm, that like architecture, I'm like, okay, Nashville would probably be really, really mm -hmm. cool too, because that's a whole different side of music, and they have a lot yeah. of history there yeah. too, so probably, oh, yeah. yeah, probably Nashville. Yeah, the city would probably be very, very cool to check out. So how do people react when you talk about this band that you've seen over a hundred yeah, times yeah. and you know what is what is your reaction from oh, yeah. people that are not in this community? Yeah. Um groupie. <laughs> yeah. well, one thing I get called. <laughs> Obviously I'm a groupie. I mean my grandpa's even asked me, have I got backstage yet? <laughs> That's really inappropriate, Grandpa. <laughs> First of all, I have no, a girlfriend. Like, yeah, I don't think you it's understand. It's not that how kind works. of thing. Yeah. No. It's not <laughs> like that. Yeah, but that's that's the main reaction I get. Also, um, especially now that I have hit my hundredth. Like when I first started my job, we did little icebreakers, and they're like, you know, two truths and a lie. And one of the truths I put in there is I've seen my favorite band over a hundred times, and everyone was just like, what? Why would you do that? And then they, you know, associate me with, like, the deadhead scene, and uh -huh. I'm like, you're getting closer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're getting closer. It's it's that family thing. Um, but yeah, I, I tell them, it's not like, like, I, I saw Metallica live, and I thought it was fantastic. They put on a phenomenal show. But I know if I went and saw them the next day, or even within the, the same tour, it's going to be the same exact show. And I think that's what people are expecting out of Umphreys, and they have to go to see that it's not like that. Like mm -hmm. it, it, like last night, they finished a song. They, they won't play the same song twice, but they will go in and finish that, or even weeks later. And I think it's it's cool how they have so much in their catalog that you can go for like a month straight and maybe you might see a, 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 the same song. I don't know. They mm -hmm. have crowd pleasers. We know, everyone does. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a different experience every time. Like I've seen, let's just say, Puppet String... <laughs> probably 30 something times or whatever I don't keep track of it but I've never seen the same one twice mm -hmm. and I think that's awesome I think that's really cool that they're able to pull it out of their hat and and present it in a in a different way mm -hmm. so um share a way that Umphreys has inspired you in your life to be more me like uh, to be more comfortable being myself like I am a goofy person who uh I don't know some I I'm kind of like the mom of the show sometimes, and it allows me to be that side of it. But I'm also like the sloppy one sometimes. <laughs> it allows me to like balance my mm -hmm. fine line of you know who am I? Because there's both there's all types in the crowd, and like no one judges you. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things that I found about Umphreys is you don't have to worry about how you look or like how you're dancing or if you're closing your eyes and crying to a song or whatever because it, people who are judging you probably won't be back. They probably don't get it. You know what I mean? They're yeah. like, you're never going to see that person again in your life. Or then other people are just like, she's having such a beautiful time and it, it, they're happy for you, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that they have inspired me to, it, like I said, the first time I saw them, I saw someone crying and I was like, like, I'm, like I'm never going to cry. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of took over me like that. And I'm like, aha, I get it now. And so it's allowed me to break down that macho wall of, mm -hmm. oh, I have to try and be someone I'm not um, and just show my raw emotion. And I think that has, tr like, trickled over into my entire life because, I, I mean, I'm more authentic. Mm -hmm. I'm more me. And, like, with that authenticity comes more happiness from me. Mm -hmm. And I think it attracts more authentic people to me so absolutely 100 percent. i feel i feel the exact same way that's, yeah. that's definitely how i feel cool um if you could choose a favorite song what would it be and why oh my goodness okay so i have it's always like the hardest question that I ask really... people. <laughs> so the very I, I would have to go with i guess one of the first songs that really really got me into them was wizard burial ground um that is just the so metal and that are and i never is it I'm going to sound like such a bad fan right now. I'm so sorry. Mulches? Mul Mulches. <laughs> okay, yeah. is, it, is it? I never know how to pronounce it. And, like, I've heard <laughs> it pronounced multiple different ways. So that, Wizard Burial, and then, like, 
my beautiful, unpopular opinion song. Sorry, everybody. I love Ocean Billy. Love it. I yeah. think it's a beautiful song. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes, like, they can do it better than others. Like, if they stick with the standard Ocean Billy, it's pretty. But I'm like, when they get into that beautiful jam section and they come back into it, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm listening to Ocean Billy. Like, this is mm -hmm. what this came out of. So, um, yeah, I, those will be my top three. Wizard really got me into Umphreys. I remember uh, when I first started seeing them, that was like the one song that I'd want to see every single time. I was kind of like that just because I was comfortable with it. I was familiar with it, but it grew into a love for songs like Ocean Billy, which there's fans who love it and there's fans who hate it. And yeah. I guess that's probably the same with every song. Yeah, right? for sure. For sure. Um, favorite album? Oh, so I really, I, I like the new one. I like what they're doing, um, but... I don't know. I Mantis, maybe. Sorry, I haven't really thought about that. I'm not like a person who listens to like full albums, mm -hmm. more like the songs. But I'm most familiar with that one, and I know. Yeah, I I'll just keep it simple, straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> like, there yeah. you go. That works. Um, if you could choose a cover that they haven't done yet. Oh, that they haven't done. What oh, would it goodness. be? I don't even know what they haven't done. I always want that. So I love. I love when they cover Iron Maiden, but I know they cover them a lot. Um, one they haven't done. You put me on the spot here. I'm like, one they I'm have not done. That. I know, my goodness. Um, so I really like police covers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know a police cover they haven't done, though. I don't know. That is a tough question. I'm like, anyone help me out here? You're, you're <laughs> going to be thinking about this yes, one. Yes, I am. Like, yes, I am. It's like one. every time I, I like hear a song on the radio and I'm like, oh my gosh, they should cover mm -hmm. this. I like look and see if they've covered it. And I'm like, oh, they have. You know, and I'm like, this is when they covered it. So, but then it's nice because then I always go and I try to find it because yeah. I'm like, I got to hear them sing this now. Exactly. Because there's exactly. just certain songs I'll hear and be like, oh, you know, like Chris would kill this part or, you know. Exactly. Like, yeah, I do that yeah, all the time. So like, I don't, I guess I can't really give an answer because I have no idea <laughs> what they haven't covered off the top of my head. And someone's going to yeah. be like, yeah, they covered that. <laughs> oh, it's super embarrassing. I'm, I'm so sorry. No. But yeah, like any, i would tell you the bands I love, like Tool, Iron Maiden, um, Black Sabbath. I cover them as much as you want, um, but I, like I said, I'm into like the heavy, heavy stuff. So mm -hmm. anything heavy that they want to bring to the table, I'm all about those covers. <laughs> nice. Um, so if you could go back in time to any moment in history of Umphrey's history that you were not there for, like Ooh, a show, yeah. you know, like what so, would you have liked to be there for? I'm really sad that I didn't get into them when I first could have. Um, because they, I live in DeKalb, and they played at autos all the time, and uh, there's, mm -hmm. it's like shut down now, and you can't even get in there, but there's like pictures of them on the wall, and I'm like, dang it, like they were so, <laughs> they were so close to me, so I guess, yeah, if I could go back in time, I would have been like, just pay more attention to this, like you're going to be able to see a lot of things um, in more intimate venues than you'll be able to in the future um, mm -hmm. that are right in your backyard, basically, so yeah, like, early 2000, like 2007, 2008, I wish I would have just stuck mm -hmm. with that raw ferry experience and really ran with it. But I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I made my time with them worth right. it so far. So, right, yeah. absolutely. I think so too. Um, all right, my last question for you. Um, describe Umphreys in three words. Ooh. Metal. That's what I think of when I think of Umphreys. Okay. Um, funky. Nice. They always bring the funk for me, and I love when they like do that. Um, and I guess family, because part of Umphreys to me is seeing people that I like. This city is beautiful because there's so many different people from like like you from New York, and then like people from San Francisco I know, and all over. And mm -hmm. I don't get to see them as much. Like I love going to places like summer camp, but you. You see the Midwest people, and like they're the people you're gonna see at the Milwaukee shows in Chicago. No, no offense to all of you guys, mm -hmm. but it is nice to like venture out of my normal, to even meet new people and like extend that family. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is a big part of Umphreys for me, and and I think that that's what I would feel the people who don't understand it the most don't get. Mm -hmm. is that community feeling like everyone's so and like it's like having a huge snap 
whatever the hell those things are called. Like, you know, like the, like the little texting groups or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like people are so immersed in their phones and like being online and having that community. Well, this is just that in real life, kind of. Mm-hmm. And you get to actually like go and see all these people. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're shocked. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, I was not imagining you like this. Yeah. But now I get to see the real raw you and I, I think yeah. that's cool. Yeah. It's a very long answer. No. But I say metal, no. funk, and family. Family. Yeah. I love that. Very awesome. Oh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> You're Thank welcome. Thank you. This is very, very awesome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I, I just, appreciate it. This is very cool.